What's up, navigation traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, May 31st, last day of May, another month in the books. Uh, in this video, I'm, not, I'm gonna go over the alerts and the positions, but it's gonna be a little bit longer video because I also want to give a little up-to-date, year-to-date update on our open positions and, and closed positions, all that good stuff. I do a separate video really for the public just showing our closed positions because obviously we don't want to give them insight into our open positions because that's exclusive for our pro members. But I wanna, I wanna provide a little bit more detail for you all here in this video, and then you can also watch the, the closed trade monthly recap like I always do. Um, but let's jump in, starting with the community and who got caught being hot. Uh, this week's member is one of our veteran traders. It goes by the handle PJ. And PJ posted a really insightful uh, perspective on stock assignment. If you didn't catch that post, I put the link here uh, so you can go check that out. I'd, I'd encourage everybody to do it. Um, and, and just some great perspective. Um, he's been he's been trading a long time, and uh, it's always good to have some insight and different perspective on kind of strategy, methodology, that kind of thing. So. Really appreciate it, PJ. We value your contributions as we do all the members and uh, keep up the good work. All right, so let's go to the alerts for the week, starting with, uh, it was a short week. Remember we had Memorial Day, so the 28th was the first day of trading. So let's go back to the 28th, even though it was a short week. Definitely not short on action, so Good week of trading here, uh, starting with ZW, which is our wheat position. We just added an iron condor in wheat out in the you know, on the cycle with 59 days to expiration. And remember, I get, I get a couple questions as, as new members come on board sometimes. When we post these options on futures trades, keep in mind that Tastyworks, uh, for example, displays this as July options, but Toss displays them as August Yes, it would be nice to have some uniformity within these, but unfortunately, that's just the way they do it. And so uh, what I do here is I always post the cycle that we're using with the days to expiration. So if you're following along and you want to place that trade or, or follow what we're doing, always follow the days to expiration, not necessarily the displayed month uh, that the broker shows. We copy these alerts directly from TOSS and paste them in there so you can see exactly where we got filled and exactly so you can copy and paste it into TOSS if you're if you want to do that as well but uh, just keep that in mind when following along so we just added this we've got a, so we've got two iron condors in wheat let's check that out uh, this is our July position or the shorter term position you can see prices right here on the break even I was just looking at how much value is left in the puts I got a tiny bit just didn't make the adjustment yet. Obviously, if price stays here, continues higher, we will close out the untested side and see if we can get a bounce back down into range uh, to profit from that piece. And then our other one is the uh, full iron condor from the alert that we just added. So you can see price is still fairly centered here, just waiting for some more time to pass before we do anything on that one. Next trade was an opening trade in DE, which is John Deere. So we just were looking to add some short delta. We liked the kind of the setup on this one. Had a push down, kind of was bouncing a little bit higher, looking for a continuation to the downside. We did this in the shorter term cycle because we were looking just to hopefully, you know, get in and out of this one in a little bit of a shorter period of time. So we use the, the shorter dated options. If we take a look at DE, you can see we're pretty close to right where we put it on right now. I actually took some heat yesterday. Price moved up out of range, which was interesting because the rest of the market was falling pretty good. However, deer caught a bid and was a little bit strong. And uh, and so if we look at a chart here, we put this on on this day here, and then it rallied a little bit, and now it's back down, kind of back into range. So hopefully we can get that little bit of a continuation to the downside in John Deere. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in SMH. So we've we had one adjusted strangle and kind of got to uh, got down to our kind of uh, downside break even. So we just went ahead and added another centered short strangle uh, out in July with 52 days to expiration. 
Now, if we look at uh, both positions in SMH, what you'll see here is uh, this is the this is the one that we've still got in June. Now we're at 21 days to expiration, so we're looking to extend duration, roll this one out. Uh, I just wanted to because of the a lot of the downside we've seen, I'm just going to see hold it over the weekend, see if we can get a little bit of a pop, get a better credit on that roll before we do so. If we take a look. Uh, there is quite a bit of the value out of the call, so definitely warranted an adjustment today. Uh, but just wanted to give it give it over the weekend, see if we get a little pop. Uh, if not, either way, we'll be adjusting that, rolling it out to July. Uh, but the alert that we sent here is this new centered strangle, where you can see prices right here, still pretty dead centered, and just waiting for some time to pass on that piece, and that is out in July already. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in ES. So this is this long put vertical that we've been kind of just carrying for that short delta exposure. Uh, we were well over 50% of max profit on that on that piece of the trade. So we went ahead and rolled that out, locked in that, uh, that credit and continue to manage this one. You can see after today's down movement, we're just, we're up a little bit after the roll, uh, but just gonna continue to hold that for that short delta exposure. Uh, speaking of short delta exposure, we are not short. We are actually a little bit long in our delta now, uh, which is just how it happens. I mean, we had a significant amount of short delta just a, a couple weeks ago. And with this recent downside, you know, we're going to close out some of our short delta positions, our range bound positions. The price is going to move more into center or even left of center, which actually provides, sucks out the short delta and naturally provides that long delta. So we will be, I mentioned this earlier, we'll be, you know, adding short delta as we see opportunities to do so. I don't like to sell short when we're what we call in the hole, you know, the market's down. I'm not going to look to enter short positions when the market's down like this, unless we get to a period where we're significantly long, then, you know, we'll definitely have to take some a little bit more drastic measures, but you can't over adjust these things. You know, we like to be in a range of short delta to versus theta of about between one to one and five to one. We are less than that. You know, we're, we don't have any short delta. We've got a little bit of long delta, uh, but you can't over adjust either. You can't, you can't panic and, 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 uh, and create an issue because, because then you get what we call whipsawed a little bit. Uh, going back and forth with Big Willie in the community, you know, he he was kind of having the same same thoughts about getting whipsawed and and adding and removing long and short delta and and you know my my theory on this is you just got to slowly massage it over time. You don't want to overreact, and so that's what we're doing here. Obviously, if we get a snapback in stocks next week, that'll benefit us because we do have long delta, and of course. If the market continues to slide lower, well, we're going to feel that a little bit, but it also gives us the opportunity to add new positions and sell some more premium. So either way, we're just going to play the cards we're dealt and deal with it as we go. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in ZB, which is the bonds. And so we have a short strangle here uh, and we just adjusted this one. Uh, July was down to about 23 days to expiration, and uh, we we needed to adjust our puts up because it breached our short strike. Uh, so we we wanted to roll up our puts, and in doing so, we just went ahead and rolled out to the August cycle with 58 days to expiration as well. Rolled our puts up from 145 to 151, so now we're carrying the 151 short straddle. So let's go to ZB here. And you can see prices moved up even more since we did that roll. So just looking for a little bit of downside and uh, just some more time to pass before we do anything else in bonds. Okay, so next position, excuse me, next alert was a rolling adjusting trade in KRE. So we had a short strangle in KRE. Uh, price came down, breached our short strike there. So we wanted to roll our calls down. Same situation as the bonds we had 23 days to expiration. So we just went ahead and rolled that out to July with 51 days. Let's take a look at KRE. KRE. And you can see prices just kind of hanging out down here. So just looking for price to kind of settle down and let that theta decay. Next position, next, uh, next alert, closing trade in CL. So this is our oil position that we put on in October and had continued to manage out 
I did a uh, a full video, just kind of the whole progression of this trade. So you'll see that coming out here probably next week. Uh, just showing you kind of how what we did from from beginning to end. Uh, I'll give you a quick snapshot now. If we go to the uh, CL, actually, let's go to the continuous contract here. And and I just showed kind of where we made all our adjustments and the fact that we had a 40% decline right out of the gate from where we got in. And then we had a 57% rally with very little pullbacks. Uh, that is a very difficult situation to trade in, but we stayed mechanical, kept our position size manageable, and we were able to book a nice profit. So got out of or our oil trade with almost a $500 profit or 400 and something dollar profit. Uh, so good, good mechanics there. Good uh, sticking with it. And, uh, and so we're out of oil until we added the new one, which I'll go over here in just a second. Next trade was a trade that we entered in XRT. So as implied volatility is popping, we are selling premium. So we added a short strangle in XRT. Let's take a look at that. Um, you can see XRT retail has been getting hit worse than worse than most things. But our uh, since we put this on, we're pretty much dead centered from where we put it on. So just playing the waiting game in XRT. Closing adjusting trade in IWM. So we closed out the call vertical side of our iron condor as price moved down. And so we're still holding that short put vertical. We also uh, later added an alert of adding a new iron condor, which you can see here, which is pretty centered from where we put it on. And then here is the short put vertical, which price came down, breached our break even. So we closed out the untested side, still holding this. If we get a little bit of a snap back up into range, we'll be in sh good shape on that. If not, we will we'll manage as needed. We've got 21 days to expiration. Remember on that piece, remember uh, with these defined risks, we're going to let those go further. It's the undefined risk, the uh, short strangles and straddles and things that we that we like to manage at that 21 days. Uh, until expiration point. Next trade, opening trade in oil. That's the one I mentioned. Now, this is one that we did on Thursday. Boy, do I wish we would have waited one day on this to enter because the option price has really spiked and with the continued downside in oil. Uh, and so the interesting thing here is, I mean, you can see we're down on this trade almost $600, but price is still fairly centered. And that's all about the IV and the option prices in these oil futures. Uh, the the option prices, the implied volatility has popped and the options have gotten more expensive, which is obviously pushing our profit line down. So did get a question in the community about, hey, should we, should we add to this one because of that? And my answer is I have absolutely no problem with you doing that. Just keep in mind, oil is a big contract. You know, so if you're adding positions, just make sure that your account size warrants uh, warrants that position size. What we're going to do is is if we add to a position, we like price to you know have moved a, a pretty decent amount. So implied volatility has moved, which is a good reason to add to a position. Uh, but in this case, we're going to wait to see you know if price moves, you know wait uh, way out here near a break even. Then we might consider adding. Uh, but this position, we're just going to hold and wait. Uh, like I said, if, if we were to put this on today instead of tomorrow, we'd be in a lot better shape, but you can't trade in hindsight either. So just a little FYI on that one. Uh, opening trade in IWM, we added that iron condor. I already showed you that. Then we did a rolling adjusting trade in XLK. This is a long put vertical that we've been holding for that short delta exposure. And we just rolled this to keep that short delta exposure. We were well over 50% of max profit on this piece of the trade. So just extending duration and keeping that short delta in our portfolio. You can see we've moved down a little bit even since that roll. So we've made a little bit since then, but just kind of continuing to hold this for that short delta exposure. Next trade, a closing trade in BA, which is Boeing. So we had a, a long put vertical on in Boeing, uh, looking for that downside action. Booked, ended up booking over 50% of max profit on that trade. We were in the trade for about 10 days. We actually could have gotten out earlier, which I know some of the members did, which is great. Uh, but we put this on uh, here, whoops, BA. 
We put this on here after we saw that nice push down and then it rallied and we were just looking for a continuation to the downside. We got that within a couple days, but we were we held on to it because we were closing out some other short delta positions and didn't want to just go ahead and close them all out. And then it went back against us, uh, took a little bit of heat, but then rolled over again and we ended up booking a profit uh, today to get out of that trade. So nice trade in Boeing. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in QQQ. So we had two sets of short call verticals in the queues. So we took one of them, rolled it, rolled it out from June to July. We were well over 50% of max profit on that piece. So we just wanted to lock that in, roll out, extend duration, keep that short delta. And then we're still holding our other piece in June. So let's go to the queues and take a look. So here's the one that we're still holding. You can see it's over 50% of max profit too, but I just I like to spread out these rolls, spread out these adjustments, spread out our trades because time is one of the factors in diversification. So holding on to that one until now and again we've still got 21 days left to June, but we'll probably, you know, if prices stay here to lower, we're going to go ahead and roll that out as well. But the alert that we just sent was today was this one here. So we just rolled that out. Price is pretty close to where we put it on. It's actually creeped up a little bit since we've done the roll, uh, but just continuing to hold that for that short delta exposure in our portfolio. So looking for some more downside there. Next trade, uh, opening adjusting in DIA. So we just added an iron condor in DIA with the option prices elevated, just looking to sell some more premium. So you can see where that is, just dead centered. We just put that on today. Still holding our other iron condor in DIA as well. And you can see price is just kind of hanging out here near the lower end of the range. And this is kind of what I was saying in oil is we like price to move down to one of the near or, or through one of the break evens uh, before we add. And that just spreads out our range. So we added this new one that's centered around here, added it in July instead of June. So we're spreading out our range. We're spreading out our expiration dates and just continuing to manage and massage that way. Uh, on this one, obviously looking for a little bit of a bounce higher to benefit that. If it continues lower, we'll close out the untested side just like we do and stay mechanical. Lastly, we opened another trade selling some more premium, in this case in EWW. You know, Trump uh, tweeted and, and there's, there's announcement from the administration that uh, there's going to be a, a new tariff levied on Mexico uh, to help add some pressure to shore up the border. Uh, who knows what else is the agenda for that, but that's the case, and that made option prices spike in EWW, which is the Mexican ETF. And so, you know, I, I know that I, I think a lot of, especially newer traders, get a little nervous with this type of trade because, you know, at this point, it looks like, you know, crap's hitting the fan, right? And in Mexico, and, you know, do we really want to put a position on in this when everything is so scary? Well, keep in mind, what we're doing is we're selling fear. You know, we are anticipating that fear is overstated. And um, I mean, look at the look at the IV uh, spiking. You know, just in one day because of that tweet, because of that announcement. And um, you know, hey, listen, this could turn into something bigger than than what we think. And you know, prices can continue lower. I'm not saying that couldn't happen, but. Our goal here is we're selling fear, we're selling premium when we see option prices elevate, and almost all the time, fear is overstated, and that's what we're trying to take advantage of. So you can't be scared about that. The way you defend is you keep your position size small, okay? So keep that in mind. And so uh, we've, in fact, this has already contracted a little bit since we put it on this morning. Uh, we're up a little bit of money, just waiting for some more profit before we do anything there. All right, so that's all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions here, uh, starting with Natty Gas. Natty Gas is not moving in our direction this week. It's moving down. We need a bounce higher to move back in our range. If we look at just the calls, uh, you can see we still got a decent amount of premium left between now and expiration, so not looking to make another adjustment at this point. Uh, just looking for hopefully some cyclicality for prices to bounce back up in Natty Gas. I mentioned bonds, I mentioned wheat, uh, I mentioned deer, DIA, EWW, FXI. Okay, so this is one that we were close to adjusting. I mean, we, you know, there's there's very little value left in the calls for sure. Just wanted to give it over the weekend to make a little potential bounce, uh, and if so, we're you know we're back in good shape. 
Uh, you know, adjusting we really like to do. Uh, we don't we don't like to over adjust, and so this one definitely warrants an adjustment. But just giving a little bit more time, uh, because we do have 21 days left in June, so not in a huge rush. But if we get a little bit of a bounce higher, we'll be in good shape there. Intel, we, we adjusted this one last week and prices come back. Even with the market selling off, Intel's been relatively uh, you know sideways during, during that period. So that's actually helped our position here. Could use a little bit more upside before we do anything else in Intel. IWM, I already mentioned that one. IYR, we've got this real estate ETF iron condor on just looking for a little bit more downside a little bit more time to pass before we do anything there we are down slightly we've made several kind of adjustments and additions and closes on this one over the last couple months and uh so we're still down slightly but in decent shape on this piece and if if price moves higher we may look to add to this one this one this piece is in june we would look to add in july next week if we do that kre this is our adjusted strangle. We adjusted it to a straddle. You can see prices right here. Looking for a little bit of upside to get back into center. Qualcomm, uh, we've got a short strangle on here that we that we sold last week, and we've got some profit here. Not quite enough to take off. Just playing the waiting game there. I mentioned Q's, SMH. I mentioned that one. Uh, SPY. We've got two pieces on here. We've got a short call vertical spread, which with this down movement is is profitable now, looking for a little bit more downside before we do anything there. And then we had also added an iron condor, which is profitable, but just waiting for some more profit before we take that off. I mentioned XLK. XLV, the healthcare ETF, price has moved nicely back into center, just waiting for some time to pass before we do anything there. And then XRT, I mentioned retail, sold to strangle. So in good shape there. So th that's all the trades. That's all the alerts. Let's take a look at kind of where we're at year to date. So if we go to our monitor tab account statement here, let's just go through some of the, uh, you know, I'm not going to go through every single one of these, but some of the the bigger, you know, pluses or minuses. Uh, had a good couple good trades in the British pound. Haven't been in that for a while with implied volatility being low, but booked a couple nice winners there. Oil, you can see, you know, 11,000, 5,000, 450. Uh, these were, these these first couple, these were kind of holdovers from last year, meaning we were already in the position. And then once the, after the first of the year, so we're looking at year to date from January 1st, then obviously that, that profit came in. Uh, on those, so that was nice to see. And obviously, now I mentioned we were we were out of that trade, and we're then we're back into a new position on oil. So you can see what they break it down by the different cycles that we traded. So net net, very positive in oil year to date. Uh, ES, you can see we're down a little bit. Obviously, we're using that as a short hedge, and with the huge rally that we saw uh, in the beginning, the first quarter of this year, really till until the last couple of weeks. Uh, you can see we're down on that one. Uh, this one here up 2,500 on Nat Gas. Okay, so you can see all the different positions. You can see uh, net net on Nat Gas. We're pretty even for the year. We had a you know a couple down cycles, a couple up cycles. So we're pretty close to even on the year in Nat Gas. Just continuing to manage that position that uh, that came over from last year as well. ZB. You can see we're we're down a little bit on this one here. Uh, with our current position, just managing out of that one. Uh, let's see what other wheat, just kind of up, down, up, down. Apple, we took that hit on that uh, long position, long, uh, let's see, I think it was a short call vertical spread. So that's where that came from. You can see some other little winners here. Baidu, a little loser. Uh, DIA, uh, with that, obviously, with a huge rally in stocks. That's kind of a common theme if you have short. Bias positions on, that's where you're going to see some losers, some winners here, small winners here. Uh, Facebook was another one, kind of like Apple, that we just closed out as a long position, took a loss on that one. Uh, let's see if there's any other major kind of big winners or losers here. The other one, oh, SMH, yeah, we're down, we're down a few thousand dollars on SMH. But overall, for the year, we, uh, this up, up 86. We're actually we're actually up about 6,000 with the way that they show the futures. I basically just took our 1231.18 uh, 
uh, net lick balance and based on where we are today, we're up about 6,000. So we're up about, what is that, 7, 8% on the year. Uh, obviously with a huge move higher that we saw in stocks with very little pullbacks and you know the managing of oil and nat gas. Uh, it's great to be in positive territory. We Earlier this year, we were much more positive, but uh, hey, we're you know up six seven percent, not bad. And if we just get some kind of two sided action as opposed to a huge massive one directional move to the upside, we will be in good shape. So that's kind of where we're at. Like I said, I did a, a video to kind of recap all the closed positions for the month. You can check out that video separately, but just wanted to give you an update here. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Look forward to another great week of trading next week. See you then.